Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with the uh, the little Mini Cooper. What we're going to be doing in this one is fitting an aftermarket Kenwood head unit, uh, as you can see. Um, this particular one is a KDC BT740 DAB. Uh, this has DAB, DAB Plus. It's also got Alexa built in, which was something that my son particularly wanted. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do is obviously get this bad boy fitted. Um, in order to fit it to the car, we do need a few other things. We need a fitting kit. This is a fascia replacement panel, uh, because obviously once we take the original factory stereo out, we can't just plonk that one straight in. We've got to have an adapter. Um, and talking of adapters, we've got a loom adapter. What this does is this takes the um, ISO connection from the stereo and converts it into the one that the Mini has. And what these are is aerial adapters. Now I've got two types. That's a standard DIN style. Uh, and this is what's known as a FACRA connector. Um, I'm not sure which one is on this particular car, so I've got one of each anyway. So that's not a real drama. Um, you'll notice what I've done is I've actually gone for flying leads on these. You can get them where they, it's literally just that with that on the end. Um, but they do make it a little bit restrictive when you're trying to, you know, um, get the stereo into the slot and they can fall out. So I've got one with a flying lead. It just gives it, it's just a bit more flexible. Anyway, what we need to do is obviously um, get the old one out. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. <laughs> One thing I do want to cover very, very quickly, um, this particular stereo um, is available everywhere. You can get it um, all over the place, Alford um, and Amazon uh, for one world. I'll leave a link to this, uh, this one in the uh, description below, um, and that goes to Amazon because that's where I got it from. There was a very good reason for this. Um, I could have got it from Halfords, however, for the same price um, as the one from Halfords, what Amazon do with their package is they include the digital aerial. Now you don't get that with the Halfords one. So basically um, you're paying more money uh, if you go down the Halfords option because you'll have to buy the uh, buy the aerial um, separately. And that's about another 20 quid. So it's a bit of a bargain. Um, you go and check it out. Uh, like I said, links in the description below. Anyway, um, enough of me waffling on about mindless rubbish. So let's get on with getting the old one out. Right, in order to remove the old stereo, there's a cut the screws behind these trim panels. So obviously these trim, trim panels need to be removed uh, in order to get the stereo out. Now, to get them out, there's a couple of screws on either side. These are T40, T40 screws, just there, one, two. And there's the same on the other side. We'll come to the other side in a minute because it's a little bit more complicated. Um, but what we'll do first is we'll get these two out. They won't be particularly tight. See, the reason I've got the glove box up uh, down is because you can't get to that one uh, with it closed. So you pop it open and it uncovers the screw. Now, <clears throat> because we're fitting a dab stereo, I do need to put a dab antenna in. And that's going to mount into the windscreen up around here somewhere. Um, in order to facilitate um, routing of the cable, I am going to pull the, the glove box out. But we'll move on to that later. We'll get the, uh, we'll get the head unit out first and we'll, we'll look at the glove box later. It's dead easy to come out. Um, there's just five T20 screws, but I'll point them out in a moment. Okay, that's the two this side. As you can see, that's not going to come out at the moment, um, but we'll, we'll move on to that very, very shortly. Um, what we'll do, we'll go over to the other side and get those two out. Okay, on this side, as you can see, um, you can get to that screw uh, there because it's covered by this trim panel, but that's easily fixed. All we need to do is just pop this panel down literally on each side, just a couple of little pegs. Ah, there we go, just there, one there and one there. And they just give them a good tug and it does, it does drop down. And as you can see now, we've uncovered both the screws, dead easy. Um, now, one thing I will point out on, I believe it's around July 2004 onwards, 
it's like this. On pre-July 2004 um, models, there's a couple of torch screws. Um, obviously, this is a, a 2005 car, so it has the later type. But yeah, if, um, if it doesn't pop down, you'll notice that there's a couple of torch screws holding it in place. So that's worth bearing in mind. Okay, so now we can get in here and get these two screws out. So what I'll do, just wind them out. And what I'll do, I'll bring you back in once I've got them both out. Okay, there we are. That's the uh, that's the four screws, two each side, both um, all removed. So we'll pop them down there for the moment. Now, what we do need to do is we need to remove these. Now, as you can see, they're still quite stuck in there. Um, there's a couple of methods by which you can get these out. And for me, the simplest way is the way that I'm gonna show you now. Um, if you look in a manual, like a Haynes or something like that, it will tell you to remove the center console, uh, pop this out, pop the gear shift lever off, uh, take the screws out. There's a few screws holding this in um, and then take it all out as one assembly. But I'll show you something a lot simpler. If you pop these off, these are just held in with these little spring uh, spring clips. They're it's dead easy. And the same with this one. Um, again, little spring clips. Um, just be mindful of these at the top that you don't snap them because um, they, they basically hook on. And as you can see, the tops of these are now uncovered. And you pull them out like that. It's absolutely simple. there we go that's both of them removed right as you can see now we can see all four screws holding the head unit in place so all we need to do is pull them out uh, and I believe that they're t20 okay and there's the four t20 screws removed from the stereo and now she will just literally slide out the face here so on the back here, yeah, we've got a FACRA connector for the uh, for the aerial. So is this one that I will require to adapt it. And then what we need to do is disconnect the wiring. There's like a little cable clamp that screws into the center. Just unscrew the middle bit and it'll pop off. Pop that back on there so it doesn't get lost. And then that frees up the cable. Then all we need to do is simply open up this little clip just give it a little squeeze it's a little bit stiff especially with the cable in the way and then just rotate it around and the plug will come out and there we are you can see what we're left with here okay now while we're on the subject what we need to do is look at the actual adapter um, for the car now Minis have two types, and here are the two types. This is known as a round pin, and this is known as a flat pin. Um, and obviously you need the one that relates to your car. So obviously I need the flat pin one, not the round pin. So that'll just simply connect on like so. Um, and this one's obviously not for this car. Um, what I'll do, the, the link that I'm gonna leave in the description for the fitting kit includes both of those cables. Um, obviously, if you wanna to go to the uh, the effort of pulling the stereo out before placing an order just to confirm which one you need, then you won't need to do that. You can you can buy a kit that's specific to your car, but the one that I've got um, obviously came with both of them. It was only about 20 quid, and that came with a face here adapter, the aerial adapter, you know, all of that good stuff. So anyway, moving on, what we need to do is um, prepare the wiring for the uh, the DAB antenna. Now, because this is a Amazon Alexa um, head unit, it's also gonna have a microphone um, routed as well, which is gonna sit up here somewhere above the driver's side, probably up here or up here. Um, and that will allow you to obviously use the Alexa functions with your voice. Um, and obviously it also gives you the ability to use your phone whilst driving, gives you the hands-free options and all that good stuff. So, uh, in order to route the cables properly, I think what I'm going to do for, for the microphone was I'm going to take it underneath the steering column and then up this A-pillar. Um, and obviously this trims down so it can, it'll easily feed through and end up here and we'll just tie wrap it in the right place so that it doesn't drop down over the pedals. Um, that'll be dead easy. And then for the dab antenna, I'm going to mount it up in this corner of the, uh, the windscreen and I'm going to take it behind the glove box. So what we need to do next is obviously get the glove box out. Okay, the glove box comes out really, really easily. It's literally held in with, uh, with five T20 bolts. One there, one there, one right at the back, 
in the middle and then inside that little hole there and inside this little hole there is literally just five of those little t20 screws um, and then the whole thing will slide out and then we just got to disconnect the little light so what i'll do i'll get the uh, the five screws out and then we'll slide the glove box out and disconnect it okay here's the five screws removed from the glove box just want to point out one little thing though oops the one on the right is different to the one on the left obviously as you can see now there's two of these and these are the ones that come out of the little holes either side and the other three are the ones that are at the top here and at the back so they are different so make sure obviously when it goes back together they get the right screws in the right holes now as you can see obviously the glove box basically falls out but all we need to do is just pop out the the light fitting and then disconnect it you, you have to just pop it out slightly because otherwise you can't get the connector up and then just pop that back in and uh job's good um so what i'm going to do i'm going to put all the screws for the glove box inside the glove box close her up and then put that to one side um because we don't need that at the moment but as you can see here we've got plenty of you know plenty of room to get cables in and um, we can bring them down here get up the a post really really easily so yeah it, very 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 simple um and uh yeah that should uh, that should do as well one other thing i do want to point out is just here there's a little hose that is uh, that connects into here and all that does is that allows cooling air to go into the glove box um if you've got something in there that you want to keep cool or hot for that matter uh yeah it just comes out let me show that little that little vent just there it's a nice little nice little feature on this car okay let's open up the box and see what we've got okay that's obviously the uh the cable that goes into the stereo itself so that goes into the back of the unit and then this one will connect to the other end of the adapter for the car so i'll pop that down there for the moment here we have the little microphone so let's have a look at what we've what we've got there's probably going to be a few options for this i'm not 100 percent sure how we're going to do it yet but it'll become apparent as i as i as i get around to fitting it so yeah that's basically how it is it's on a little swivel so we can put it anywhere we want to really um i could tuck it in in there could tuck it in behind the a pillar um and then just have it swinging round there's you know there's plenty you know up here somewhere um quite a few quite a few different options for where i can put it obviously i need to make sure it doesn't interfere with the with the um sun visor but yeah I, i'll figure something out for that um even if it pops in here i mean this here to get it out you just literally pull it down at the front and there's like a little spring clip and then a couple of clips at the back you just got to be careful that you don't try and pull it in the front otherwise you could damage something but there's nothing stopping that going perhaps in there or in there like so um, that may be an option um and then just pop that back in like like that that's you know that's that is one option um and then tuck the cable up here uh yeah they, but I'll, I'll figure something out for that in a, in a in a moment what i'm going to do first though is i'm going to route the dab antenna now as i said before the dab antenna is going to go up in this corner of the windscreen up here so we have to fetch it out of the box which is just here i'll pop that over there for the moment because i don't need it right let's open up the antenna package and have a look at what we've got as i said before it's it's good that amazon include this in their kit um, at no extra cost compared to uh, obviously the halfords option all right so as we can see we've got a couple of little bits to it there's um, an alcohol prep pad which we'll use to clean the screen before we fit anything um, and there's a couple of little couple of little sticky pads in there uh, with little, little little clips so we'll have a look at those in a moment um, part of the antenna there and then the rest of it it's just here all stuck to the card and there we go okay so what we've got here is um plenty of cable absolutely loads of it um what we need to do is obviously route it where it needs to go um 
and any excess I will just tuck in and tie wrap up behind the glove box so it's nice and tidy and out of the way. And there we are, as you can see there's absolutely stacks of it. This could go to the back of the car if we wanted it to. Um, so yeah, we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be stuck for uh, stuck for cable. That's for certain. Just unwind it all, and there we go. Right, let's get this tucked in where we want it to go and up the A pillar. Okay, before we actually go through the physical act of um, putting the cable where we want it to go, obviously we need to position the antenna so it's in the right place. Um, having a quick flick through the instructions to, for the positioning, the ideal positioning for the antenna itself. Um, it needs to be 150 mil from the top of the screen and 50 mil uh, between here and the A pillar. So this needs to be roughly around here um, for the uh, for the best installation. Now. What I will point out on the rest of the cable, there's a little tiny contact just there, and that contact is going to sit over this block once it's installed. So, it will be kind of like that. So that gets stuck on the windscreen, then that gets stuck onto this, and then this is what's known as an earth strap, and that has to be in contact with the bodywork. So behind this A pillar, this will stick to the bodywork, and then the cable will simply run down the, uh, down the inside. So what we'll do first is we'll get the antenna put into uh, the correct place so I've got the little alcohol prep pad just here and what we're going to do is we're going to give the give the screen a good clean just to make sure that there's nothing on here that's going to stop it sticking and that should be more than good enough and then I'll take the workshop tissue and then dry it off. Now the majority of the alcohol will obviously evaporate, but it was quite wet, so just giving it a helping hand. And then what we need to do is um, take our little uh, take our little antenna and um, position it. Now obviously depending upon what side of the screen it's going to be on, it will depend upon which way up it's going to be. If it was on the other side, it would be that way because obviously this little block needs to be against the pillar. So and on the passenger side, it should always be installed on the passenger side really, so that it doesn't cause any obstruction. Because um, obviously anything that's within the sweep of the wipers um, could be picked up on an MOT and we don't want that. So to fit this, all we need to do is peel the first part of the sheet off, which has got a number one on it, which makes it really, really simple. And then we simply sticker into place just like so and then make sure it's firmly attached and there we go that is the first part installed now it does stick out into the windscreen a little bit, but it's not going to cause any distraction because as you can see from the dirt on the windscreen, it's well outside the sweep of the wipers. So it, it won't cause us any, any issues. So now what we need to do is we need to install this section and obviously that's going to sit on that little block and we need to get this earth strap uh, in behind the A pillar. So what we'll do next is get the A pillar off. Right, um, A pillar removal on, on these little cars, it's really, really easy. The easiest way to do it is simply pull the weather seal out so it's like this and you can see the edge of the A pillar. And all we've got to do is literally just pop it out. It, it does take a little bit of force, but you can see what you're overcoming here. You've got these little clips and just inside here, we've got these metal, they're like little grips that grab onto these little, these little tangs. So all you're doing is pushing it out of these. It's dead easy. Um, so we'll put that to one side because we don't need that for the moment. And here you can see now we've got access to the uh, the, the metal bodywork of the car just here. And uh, yeah, we, we, we've got plenty of options now to route the cable down. Um, so it goes behind the dashboard. Uh, this cable here, um, if you've seen the video where I installed the dash camera, is is exactly that. It's the cable that comes from the dash, uh, the dash cam. Um, so don't worry about that one. Um, but yeah, so what we need to do now is obviously get the rest of the antenna installed um, and then we can route the cable. 
Okay then, before we begin, what I do want to do is just point out a couple of little things on the antenna. You can just see here, there's a couple of little dimples. Now those dimples are there for a very good reason. If we look at the antenna on here, we can see that there's three little black arrows. And those dimples, when we install it, need to align perfectly with those arrows. And that will ensure that the, uh, the connector here is in contact with the antenna and that it's not going to have any reception problems. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what those uh, little dimples are for. And so it will sit just like that, basically. That's exactly how it's going to be. And then the cable will come into the trim and then run down the inside. So what we need to do is I need to remove the next layer here. Uh, with the number two on it and then the 3m sticky backed the 3m sticky backed um sheet off the off the antenna which is obviously easier said than done you need really long nails to help this come on i've always been useless at peeling things like this could never find the end of the sellotape either Come on. Unfortunately on this one they don't give you a little tab to peel it with. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna struggle on here. I'll get there eventually and then I'll bring you back in once we're ready to stick it on. Finally, got there in the end. That was a lot harder than it should have been. Right, now all I need to do is just make sure those little dimples align with the arrows. Just like that. And then press it on and ensure that it's fully stuck in place. Just like so, and there we are. And that's it installed and that little contact will be in contact with the correct point on the antenna so lastly what we need to do is obviously we need to install the earth strap where it needs to go and that is just a case of again peeling off the peeling off the uh, 3m sticky and then just pushing it across to the bodywork just like that and then yeah and then sticking it down so it's in place really simple really easy not too difficult and there we are right now we're in a position whereby we can route the cable so the cable is going to come into the atrium and going to run down and then it's going to come into the dashboard and i reckon i could probably get it down this gap here now this this panel here does pop off again if you've seen my dash cam install you'll have you'll have seen me do this before and then all i'm going to do is i'm going to run the cable down here and then this will go down the back here and then it will come out in the glove box compartment just like just like so so that was pretty easy not too difficult at all And then I'm just going to leave enough slack just to be able to get the trim on and then we'll move on to actually rooting it down to the stereo. But for now, we're done here so I can get the A-pillar trim on and refitting re re it is exactly the same way as removing it. You just obviously the, the opposite way around. So I'll get that all back on and then we'll get on with rooting the, uh, rooting the cable into the stereo. Okay, so what we've got here now, we've got all the trims installed and as you can see, the, uh, the antenna um, looks quite nice and tidy. Um, quite nice and neatly installed and um, the cable is obviously tucked neatly into the A-pillar. Um, so all I've got now is I've got the cable here hanging out of the glove box compartment um, or the area behind the glove box compartment should I say and I've put all these trims back on and the weather seal and that sort of stuff. So what I need to do is I do need to somehow I've managed to tie that in a knot. It's typical with cabling. Come on. 
what have I done there? Right. So what I need to do now is I need to obviously get this to come out of here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to feed it behind some of the things in, you know, there's a few different things on this bulkhead here. I'm going to feed it behind all that. And I've got some, uh, I've got some tie wraps as well, which I can use to tie it up in out of the way. So it's not going to interfere with anything. And then I'll get it so that it's coming out of here. And then what we'll do next is we'll move on to the, uh, the microphone in store. Um, and as you can see up in the top corner there, I think that's where I'm going to, uh, going to put it because it seems to be probably the best option it just it just seems to fit right there uh, and the cable is going to again go down the a pillar just the same way as this one did so it'd be a case of pulling that a pillar off um sending it down the side of the dash and then under the steering wheel and again what i'll do i'll tie wrap it up and then it'll just come out of here it's dead easy and i'll get on with all of that and then i'll bring you back in once we've got all the cables coming out here right then as you can see microphone installed a pillar back on and here's the other end of it coming out of the opening for the stereo so all the uh, all the cables that we need to route to get to the stereo are now where they need to be and now what we need to do is obviously fit all these little cables here to adapt the car to the new stereo so first things first we'll connect the adapter for the aerial uh, for the this is the regular um fm radio then what we need to do is fit this This adapter to the to the uh, to the car loom, get them together, and then lock it down like so. Now here, this is the part that goes directly to the head unit, and as you can see, what we've got here is two connectors. One's for the power, the ante power antenna, switch live, permanent live and ground, etc., etc., and the brown one uh, contains all the cables that go to the speakers. And if we look at them, they are keyed. You can't get them wrong. The black one, the key at the bottom is slightly too slight to one side, whereas the brown one's dead in the center. And you can see that on here. So all we need to do is clip them into place. And that is that all done. Now, obviously we've got quite a lot of cable here. So what we'll need to do is obviously feed it back out, probably tuck it into this area here behind this trim panel, just to give us room. Otherwise it'll all bunch up behind and we won't get the stereo in. So that's worth bearing in mind. Now, um, what I will cover very, very briefly is these two here. One is a switched live and one is a permanent live. Now, the switch live obviously uh, tells the stereo to turn on when you turn the ignition on. The permanent live is there to retain data like your radio station settings, uh, you know, all of that kind of thing, time, you know, anything that basically needs to be retained in the memory of the stereo. Now, on some cars, you may find that it won't work. Um, it won't retain any memory. If it is, if that is the case, all you need to do is pull these apart and switch them over so that the yellow goes to the red, red goes to the yellow. Um, it's because some cars do have them the other way around. I think VWs are notorious for it. I may be wrong, but I've, I seem to recall that VWs um, have their switched and um, uh, permanent lives the other way around. So that's worth bearing in mind if um, if you do have the problem where is your where your stereo isn't retaining uh, any settings or anything like that. So what I'll do now is I'll tuck all of this um, back a little bit and then what we'll do now is actually get on with actually installing the head unit itself. Okay, so first thing we want to do before we can uh, get the stereo out of the box is we need to install this trim panel which obviously goes on like so and we just need to feed all the cables through and then that simply screws into place in the position where the old stereo used to be so we need the four t20 screws which i've got just down here screwdriver just tighten them all into place they need to be overly tight they're only they're only screwing it in a little plastic clip so if you over tighten them just strip the threads out so just nip them up nip them up gently 
and there we go. That is that installed. And obviously that will adapt the, uh, the new stereo into the face here, um, so it looks a bit more like a factory install. Now, what we need is the stereo itself out of the box. And take it out of the bag. And there we are. Okay, what we're gonna need first is this, this bit here, which is known as a cage. Obviously we need to get the right way up, otherwise the cage will be upside down. Um, pop that down there for the moment. And then this needs to be installed into the aperture for the stereo. Now what this does is this allows you to, re allows the stereo to be retained in the, oh, I've got it the wrong way around. Allows it to be retained in the aperture so that um, it cl basically clicks into place and stays there and um, doesn't fall out. Um, now all I've got to do is just gently feed it into place. And there, you heard it click into place because there's a couple of little clicks, a couple of little clips on the side that help you do that. But what we also need to do is take a screwdriver and all the way around, you can see these little tangs. And what we need to do is just bend over as many as we can. And what that does is that will retain the cage in place and prevent it being removed. And it will prevent, um, basically it helps prevent theft. Um, so bend over as many as you can um, in order to make the cage stay where it is. And that'll do you. And there we are. Okay, so now we have the cage installed. That's nice, it's nice and secure. And we've got all the cabling that we need to be able to connect the stereo to the car. So what I've done with, with the microphone and the dab antenna, I gave plenty of slack, because um, they're only thin cables anyway, they'll tuck neatly in there. It's just this one here, obviously because it's a bit of a big block, you just need to be mindful that as we push the stereo in, I'm gonna, from this side here, I'm going to kind of be trying to feed it back so that it doesn't sit behind the stereo and prevent it being pushed in um, fully home. So, what we'll do, we'll take the stereo, as you can see, it's got like a protective coating over it. Quite an attractive looking unit. And here we have all the connections on the back. Okay, so um, on the dab antenna, there's a little cover that needs to be removed. And then that will connect onto here. It just basically looks like a little push fit. That one is for the FM antenna. We'll get that one connected first. Um, just making sure that it'll go in okay. It's a bit, a bit of a tight fit. Um, I don't think that's all the way home actually. It's, it is a bit of a tight fit, but it'll, it will go. It just take a bit of effort. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to give that a good push in a minute, but we'll work on that in a second. The microphone, it says mic just there, so I'll connect that one in like so. And as I said, the dab antenna. Just pushes on like so. These two, these ones here are the pre-outs for um, uh, a power antenna, If you uh, a power amplifier, should I say. So you can see you've got front and rear just on here, pre-outs. Um, also, if, you, if you're if you running a subwoofer, um, you could you could connect it to those as well and obviously run, run your amp. And then this one, we're simply gonna connect in place there, just like that. Okay, so now what I need to do is obviously just slide it into place and it will click into place and lock um, into this cage. There's a couple of little spring tabs on either side, just, just there which uh, I'm pressing with my finger right now, just there. And what they'll do is they'll lock into the slots on the side of the stereo just here. And then once it's in place, the way to 
remove it will be to use these these little keys which come supplied in the box basically you slide them down and they they push the clips in and allow you to allow you to slide the stereo out so what i do need to do is obviously just make sure that this is fully home it's not yet so i'll give that a good uh, working over and then i'll bring it back in as we're going to uh, as we're going to slot it in okay as you can see i got it in it, it lit, all it needed was a little bit of a wiggle just to just to force it in and, and it went in it actually went in fairly easily it was just it just wasn't quite aligned properly i don't think so now what we need to do is slide her in but what we need to make sure we don't do is trap any of the cables between the side of the stereo and the cage because obviously it will it will damage them so push her in there like so and then what i need to do is round the back here i'm just gonna pull these cables through just to get them out of the way and then slot her in until she clicks like so and that is the stereo installed now what we need to do next is simply reinstall all the trims and she should be uh, she should be working now what i want to do obviously is i need to make sure that it comes on when i turn on the ignition and here we go so obviously we've got to set the language and all that good stuff um and then obviously it runs through a, a weird demo and we could set the uh we could set the uh, display colors all sorts of things and then obviously what i need to do is um set up the the dab but obviously it's working we can see it's working what i do want to do is just cancel the demo demo off and then if i switch it to a radio station we should get as you can hear we are getting output i'm not going to uh, i'm not going to tune it into a station right now because obviously if it plays music i'll get a, i'll get a copyright strike off of uh, off of youtube because that's the way they are but as you can see we are getting we are getting sound output from the uh, from the rear speakers in the form of static at the moment um so i'm i'm happy that it's uh, i'm happy that it's working obviously we've got a usb uh, input as well yeah this is bluetooth audio again so we can connect phones i do know you can connect uh two phones to this to this unit which is quite nice um auxiliary and then standby okay so what i'm going to do now is turn it off and there we go and the unit's powered down has returned the ignition off so happy with that uh, obviously all the setup and everything i'm going to go uh through once i've uh, once i've reassembled the car i'm not going to bore you with all that because it, it, it that's different depending upon the stereo unit anyway okay so what i need to do now is get everything um back together and then i'll bring you back in once uh, once i've done all that okay as you can see obviously all the trims are all back in and the car is back to normal just with a uh, aftermarket head unit in so what i've done um is i've um sorted the stereo out so that it's orange because then orange uh, matches everything else in the car um but my son can obviously uh, he can obviously adjust that if he wishes uh, and i've set the clock uh, and stuff like that um now uh sources what i've got here uh, currently it's set to bluetooth audio and if i play that um it's playing astronaut in the ocean um and i'll give it a quick uh, and that's as much as i'm going to do because otherwise youtube will give me a strike um and that's playing off of my uh, uh, off of my iphone uh, so that's working perfectly fine um if we go to that's aux standby digital audio so this is digital radio um where i'm currently where the car currently is right now is a bit of a black hole for uh, digital but it does pick up all the bbc stations so there's there's um, bbc radio one uh, again i'll turn that down quickly um uh, bbc the bbc channels it picks up all right but the uh, the other channels such as you know the uh, the absolute radio channels and kiss and stuff like that um if, if i drive basically half a mile we'll pick all those up it just there's a little bit of a black hole where i'm currently living um, and yeah the standard radio we've got standard radio local radio station there as you can hear i don't even know what that song was but yeah it all seems to be working perfectly fine there's a usb section so you can stick a usb stick in there if we wish um ipod uh spotify i'm not 100 sure how that one works um 
but uh, I'm guessing if you've got a Spotify account, you can play Spotify audio directly off your phone. Um, and uh, yeah, there's the, we're back to Bluetooth audio again. Obviously, this one um, isn't a mechless unit. This one does actually have a CD slot. Um, obviously, if you get a if you get a mechless one, you uh, you don't get CDs, and a lot of people tend to uh, go for that option nowadays. Uh, if you have a mechless one without a CD unit, the actual depth of the CD unit itself, uh, um, sorry, the actual depth of the head unit itself is a lot shallower, so you have a bit more room behind for for the cabling and stuff. Uh, so that's worth bearing in mind. Anyway, I'm going to turn it off now. Obviously, it's working perfectly well. Uh, and there we go, it just shuts down on the uh, on the ignition. I'm very, very happy with that. So I'm happy that the, um, you know, all the antenna, etc. works. I haven't messed around with the microphone yet. I'll, uh, I'll have a bit of a play with that later. Um, but yeah, anyway, that is the, uh, the, the, the stereo installed. It wasn't too difficult. It's pretty straightforward. Obviously, a little bit of messing around with trims and stuff, but um, nothing too, nothing too taxing. Uh, if you like this video, uh, obviously give it a like uh, leave a comment in the uh, in the in the box below and um, hopefully I'll see you all again for the next one thank you for stopping by guys see you soon bye bye now